folks, it's Jeff here. Just a quick reminder, if you're loving Disney Coast to Coast, there are a couple of easy ways that you can support the show. We'd love it if you could rate and review us on iTunes or wherever you listen to the show. This is a simple way to help other Disney fans find us. Also, go ahead and share your favorite episodes on social media and be sure to tag us. You can find all of our social media information at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. And finally, I just want to say thank you to all of you who listen every week. Your support is very appreciated, and we love that you're enjoying our Disney geekiness. Now on with the show. Get ready for your weekly dose of pixie dust with Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff Tapali, and today on the show, my friend Derek is joining me to talk about the food at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Hi, Derek. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me today. First time on. First time on. Very excited. And you, uh, you're a foodie a little bit. I'm a little bit. I wouldn't. I mean, I, you're, you're I enjoy You're not like a professional food. foodie, yeah. but you like food. I, I mean, I've it. caught you staring at photos of sweets I on do. the computer. I have a bad sweet tooth. That is the truth. <laughs> And in order to not eat all of it, I just stare at pictures. <laughs> so it plays that is, craving. Which is so funny to me because, frankly, that would make it worse for me. Like, staring I, at the picture, I'd be like, oh, now I'm going to go get one. Yeah. But luckily you have that out where you I, can stare at a photo and that fulfills your desire. Yeah, if, because if the food's not in front of me, I'm fine. <laughs> if I see a picture, I'm like, oh, good. I'm, I'm good. See, here's the difference. You would, lo- I would look at the photo and on, like, the drive home from wherever, it, I would yeah. go to Krispy Kreme. Yeah. But in any case, let's jump into the conversation about the food at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge right now. It's time to dive into today's Disney dialogue. All right, so is there a place you want to start? Well, I started off with lunch at um, Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo. Okay. So that was probably the, the, my first stop. And um, I just want to start off by saying I got lunch and I did it through the Disneyland app. So I thought. Oh, the mobile for- the, food or uh, what do they call it? The f- mobile. Food order? Yeah, I believe so. Mobile order. Mobile whatever. order. Yeah. Yeah, just so that I, because, you know, I didn't want a, a big rush. I wanted to avoid lines or anything like that. And I must say, do that because it, it was so easy. And Had you used it before? Never used it before. We hadn't done it in Florida? I, I think I did. No, I don't think we did okay. actually use it. I mean, we made, we made reservations, but we didn't do it through the app. Okay. So, and I did it the day of before we entered the, the, the park in the land of Galaxy's Edge. So Yeah. So it worked successfully for you. Yeah. I didn't use it uh, mm-hmm. because I just kind of didn't know where it was going to be at certain points. But yeah. I will say overall, the lines for food weren't bad. Like that was not your worry. Not at all. So yeah. I, this was obviously during the preview period still. Yeah. So I think, you know, once that June 24th date hits, it'll probably be more beneficial to use the mobile food app. Exactly. So do that. Yeah. But uh, you said you started at Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo. Yeah. And the story behind this, uh, well, basically the, they say choose from a variety of dishes prepared with ingredients from across the galaxy Mm -hmm. encounter familiar flavors that have unexpected and surprising colors and textures yeah surprising is a good word for for docking bay seven food and cargo what did you get there so i got the main entree of the fried and dorian tip ye I hope I'm saying tip yep the- tip yep okay yeah, tip yep I hope I'm saying all these right so please correct I'm me. pretty sure it's tip yep because I got a tip yep thing as well yes and uh, they do have breakfast lunch and dinner options Ooh. here by the way oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they have a menu changes. Most of the, uh, several of the locations at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge had breakfast options, which is great because I find in general Disneyland Park doesn't have a ton of breakfast options. Yeah, I agree. It, but uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge does, which is good. So, how was your? What was it again? Fried and Dorian tip yip. Tip, tip tip yip. And how was that? What what was it? It was basically essentially a fried chicken. I don't want to say a patty, but it was in a, a strip, but it was a fried chicken over... A chicken tender? Yeah, basically a, a giant chicken tender and um, over a mashed potatoes with carrots and peas inside of the mashed potatoes with a, a type of gravy. Um, but it tasted very much like any type of gravy that you could get anywhere. I That sounds good to me. You know, presentation-wise, it, it was good. Um, but I have to say, the overall food quality, I felt like I was eating a TV dinner. Ah, uh, that's... 
Uh, I mean, listen, the thing I got there I didn't yeah. love either. Yeah. I got, what did I get? I got the roasted Endorian Tip Yip salad. Ooh. First okay. of all, I don't know what Tip Yip means. Me neither. Uh, I'm going to assume this is a made up Star Wars thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it was, so the Tip Yip salad was marinated chicken, mixed greens, roasted seasonal vegetables, Ooh. quinoa, and pumpkin seeds tossed in a green curry ranch. Okay. It was fine. Yeah. It, I will. This is what I will say. First of all, the easiest comparison to this location altogether is Satuli Cantina at yes. at uh, Pandora, the World of yes. Avatar. Yes. Very similar presentation. Very similar. Yes. Uh, plateware. Exactly. And all that stuff. And so that's the easiest comparison if you've been to Walt Disney World. Yes. Like. I don't know. I kind of felt the same way, same way about Satuli Cantina. Where I was like, the food's fine. Yes. I was not grossed out by it. Not at but all. I don't think that that is the goal of. No. It just was. It looks better than it is. Exactly. The presentation of these plates are really quite beautiful. They I feel are like very much so. And the food's fine. It's not overpriced. I feel like it's priced well. Yeah. It's quick service, but it's like not a hamburger, exactly. which is great. And. You know, I, I don't think you'll go wrong with the food there, but it was not my number one choice. Exactly. At Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I completely agree with that. Now, I will say I got some of the specialty drinks there. Ooh. I actually ordered the Fatro, P-H-A-T-T-R-O, which is Gold Peak Unsweetened Tea, Adwala Lemonade, Desert Pear, and... That's what I ordered, but they made a mistake and gave me the Moof Juice, Ooh. which is Simply Fruit Punch, Simply Orange with Pineapple and Chipotle Pineapple. A lot of stuff I don't like right there. Yeah, that's so a lot. Any, so yeah, I get it. And of course, I don't know what it's really supposed to look like. So I'm drinking the Moof Juice and I taste it. I'm like, this ain't right. And then, because <laughs> I'm like, I got like a tea thing. This tastes nothing like tea. Yeah. So I go back up and I just explain. And I look at the receipt and the receipt actually said Moof Juice. I'm like, oh, that is not what I ordered. So I go back up and I explain it and they're happy to switch it out. Yeah. And as they're like dispensing, the Fatro, which I ordered, I was like, this looks like piss. Oh, like, it no. was like that yellow no. with foam on top. Gross. And I was like, okay, doesn't look good. No. I get to the table, I drink it. Oh my God. What did it taste like piss? No. <laughs> it was like Ooh. the super bitter ginger. Gro- like, oh, really? Gross. I took a sip. I didn't have any. I threw it out. Oh, I was like, this too- is revoltingly bad. Yeah. Uh, I was not a fan of the Fatro at Docking Bay 7. So if you go, I mean, hey, it could be the new Beverly challenge. Yeah, right? the, that's true. You the, could. The difference is this is not free. Uh, is. You're paying like five or six bucks for it. But it was, I mean, it was gross. That sounds intense. So, I mean, if you want to drink ginger, I guess, do it. Otherwise, I'd say stay away from the fat Yeah, drum. that's that's a tough one. Not my favorite. Uh, did you get anything else at Docking Bay 7? I do. I do. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Batu Bun dessert, which was, I have to say, presentation-wise, going back to what you were saying, exactly like the um, the cantina in um, um, Pandora. It looked exactly the same. I thought it was beautifully done. And it was essentially, it was a chocolate mousse, and it was very good. It was, it was, it was a nice way to, to end the meal so i enjoyed that very much so okay cool yeah so you know uh, some good options at docking base yeah the, the thing is with with these is like it's you know it's not straightforward it's not like a burger and fries exactly you, you gotta kind of look and read and see what's going on and see if you like it yeah they do overall i felt like star wars galaxy's edge had a lot of options as far as you know allergies or vegetarian yeah. or whatever so those options are definitely there so that is a very very good thing yes and yeah, uh, but Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo, the, the atmosphere is pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say atmosphere-wise. And then I asked my friend that I was with, our, our mutual friend, um, you know, what did you feel about the atmosphere? And one thing that he had noticed was um, he said it felt nice because it didn't feel overly crowded. It didn't at all. And that was my yeah. – I totally felt that. I was like, oh, I didn't have to fight for a table. Yes, yeah. It will come June 24th. I was say, so that might change. <laughs> yeah. It might change your view on it. So Yeah. I, I do want to mention, did you notice? So this is very cafeteria style where you order at a counter, yeah. you pick it up, and then you go pick up your napkins and yes. utensils and stuff. And they have metal sports. Yes, they did. Okay. So – since so we were there opening day. Yes. Since then, the metal sporks are no longer self serve because people were stealing them and they've oh, shown up on no, eBay already. Yeah, they're up on eBay wow. for about eighty five bucks wow. uh, per spork, 
And it's just like, this is why we can't have nice things, yes. right? And so they are, you know, they're still giving them to you if you use, you know, at the counter, but okay. it's no longer like grab a straw type of situation. Wow. So I, I'm not going to lie. I took a picture of the spork because yeah. like, this is really cool. Yeah. Like it was, I'd never seen a metal spork no. before. I, I never even thought to myself, stick it in my bag. Like what is wrong with people? Well, I that, I thought that too. When I first got it, I was like, wow, these are actually metal. I thought they were plastic when I, and then I picked it up and I went, no way. So yeah. impressive, but we steal them. So shall we talk about blue and green milk? Yes. Because this is something that everybody talks about. So blue, I got to be honest. I've seen the Star Wars films many times. Yes. I don't specifically remember blue and green milk being mentioned. I know that they were. Yes. I know that they're part of the saga. This next time around, so this December, I fully plan on watching every Star Wars saga movie leading up to the release oh, of the final that's one. A great idea. And then I hope to finish it at the Chinese theater where it all began. Oh, that's such that's a my idea. plan. Yeah. So we'll see if that happens. But in any case, as I go through this time, I will definitely be paying attention to blue and green milk, which, of course, you know, it's not going to taste anything like it does in the of movies because not. it's gross in the movies. <laughs> Uh, th- listen, the comparison here is Butterbeer, right? Like, Yes, biggest thing. You know, Butterbeer was this basically printing gold for Universal. Right. And so Disney was like, well, let's have our version of Butterbeer. Yes. And uh, like Butterbeer, where in the books and the film, I believe it's actually described as a hot beverage. It is. Yes, very much. In the parks, of course, the initial one was not. It was a soda. Yes. Because that's what people in hot theme parks want. Yeah. So they did the same thing with blue and green milk, and I totally understand that this is a, a cold beverage. Yes. And people seem to have very, very extreme opinions about the blue and green milk. I, I agree. I mean, it's a uh, it, well. First off, it's not any. There's no lactose in it, so yeah. it's completely dairy. It's not milk. <laughs> yeah, it's not milk at all. It's uh, it's coconut and rice milk. So it's a more of a, obviously a dessert feeling because it is milk based, but um. I, ha- I say it's very much a slushy with a cream texture. At least I got the blue, yeah. by the way. I didn't get. I did try some of the green, but I got the blue. I like the blue more. Okay. So I did enjoy. I did enjoy it. it. You know, it's like a fun little dessert. And if I had to say of everything there, I would go straight to the blue milk again. Oh really? Yes, I would. And I think interesting. And then on top of that, I think. Um, you know, for me, the 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 um, docking bay seven food and cargo was fun, but I think it's really the uh, Black Spire Outpost merchant stands that really are the special part of it for me, and getting the blue milk. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the blue milk, the only place you can well, you, the only place you can get blue and green milk is at the milk stand, yes. which is a little stand out in the land. Yes, and there is a version of it in the cantina as well that I'll talk about in a second. But the it's not the same thing, but. Uh, you know, I didn't have strong opinions about the blue and green milk. I tried them both. Yes. I thought they were both good. Sure, yeah. I honestly can't, as I think back at it, like, really recall what the flavors were. I remember one of them tasting kind of like a blended tropical starburst. Yeah, I think that was more of the green one. Okay. Yeah. Cause and what it was the blue one? What did the blue one taste like? It was it's, sweet. It was very sweet. It, it had, it. yeah, it's just more of like a cream-based texture, but more blueberry-ish, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. There were people I'd heard from, like, really, I talked to a lot of people in the land who had strong opinions about this stuff. Right. And it was like, oh, get the blue, definitely not the green, yeah. or vice versa. Or, oh, the green tastes like grass, like yes. it has a weird aftertaste. I didn't experience any of that. <laughs> I was like, they're both fine. Yes. They are, for me, I didn't feel like, oh, this is a must every time. I wouldn't either. And I have to say, I, I, I enjoy butterbeer more if I have yes. to choose. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But butterbeer to me was like crack cocaine for a while. Yes, it was. Since they've changed the recipe, I, I changed my mind on it. And I honestly don't get it anymore other right. than the hot butterbeer. But... It wasn't that. Like, there was... No, I agree. When I went to Wizarding World, it like, or when I go, mm-hmm. it's a, it used to be a, I must get this every time. Exactly. So I don't feel that way about blue and green milk. It's fine. I will say it's it's $8 it is. for a pretty small cup of it. It's pretty small. I would say $6 would be the perfect amount for the size that you Five get. Five or six bucks, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I, yeah. Would, the, I wouldn't really think about it. Eight bucks for that. I mean, obviously, you got to try it. If of you're course. in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, yeah. get one of them. Get, you know, yeah. get a friend to buy the other. Taste each other's. Yeah. Have that fun. But I don't think it's... It's not hypeable. Well, I mean, my whole thing is like, if I, if when when I do go back, that is the one thing I'd always get. Okay, I'd go straight there and get. Well, that. then you've got to go to the cantina. Yes, because th- now you didn't go, right? I didn't get a chance to go in because they were over capacity when I was during my time frame. Okay, so Oga's Cantina, big hot spot. 
in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. This is a place that does hit capacity, but I will let you know, like, I when I went in for the second time, it, it was the first thing we went to. Yeah. And we were, like, at the end of the cutoff line, right? Basically, a couple of people behind us, they were like, this is the cutoff. Mm -hmm. Come back later, they told people. So if you see it cut off, I would say keep returning. Talk to the cast member at the back. This yeah. isn't like a hard cutoff like for the rest of the, your time there. It's just throughout the day they cap it because they'll look and be like, okay, this is like an hour wait. Don't waste your time. Go do other stuff and come back. Right. So we did that. We probably waited 30 to 45 minutes. It wasn't terrible. It's good. Went inside. And they have, uh, first of all, very cool atmosphere. Of course, the cantina, very famous scene from the uh, Star Wars films. And, you know, it has that vibe. Yeah. You, I will say, now, you and I have both gone to a ripoff cantina in Hollywood yes. uh, that shall remain nameless. <laughs> but it was not very, very good. Not at all. It was one of those pop-up places that's now sticking around. But, yeah. like, we walked in and I think 10 minutes later walked out. I was like, that right. was nothing. But Olga's Canteen is not that. This is very cool. My highlight for this is Rex, the old pilot from, right. from Star there. Tours. Yes. He's a DJ in there. Oh, wow. And Paul Rubens came back and recorded new dialogue for him. Oh, wow. Which is awesome. So, like, the, and actually, the place where we were yeah. was right in front of Rex. Like, all the, you know, the whole time we were there, we were just watching him spin tunes and have his little dialogue. What? And it was cool. He's cool. And uh, so, basically, when you go in, there are booths surrounding the walls. Yeah. But most of it is just stand at the bar. Yes. And then they have, like, bar tables between the booths and the bar. So, there's okay. even additional places. But it's like, go stand. And they basically say, grab a spot and don't leave it. A server will come over to you. Oh, that's nice. Because it's busy. Yeah. So, they – it's basically you stay and you wait for somebody to come. You place your order. And then – you know, you enjoy yourself and leave. Yes. There are many people who I'm sure will spend many, 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 many hours in this place. Not me. I'm not like I bars uh, are not where I spend a ton of time. Right. But I enjoyed it. I wish they served food. I understand why they don't. Okay. I, I think they eventually will. Yeah. But right now, I think they just want to cycle people in and out as fast as possible. Of course, yeah. They do have a lot of collectible drinks, like a, the collectible mugs and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, they go for about 35 bucks though, because wow. like they're all you know Star Wars themed specialty glasses. Nice. And they bring your drinks, and then they will bring you clean versions when you leave. And you're uh, you're only allowed two alcoholic drinks. Oh, really? Yeah, and I think that's well. So people don't get drunk no more. Because you got to yeah. remember, this is a big deal for Disneyland it's Park. It's a huge deal. This is the first restaurant at Disneyland Park to serve alcohol outside of Club 33, which, of course, most people don't get to go to. Yes. Even as of right now, the Blue Bayou uh, at you know Pirates of the Caribbean does not serve alcohol. I think that might change yeah. in the near future, which doesn't bother me. Sure. I am all for... You know, sit down restaurant, enjoy a glass of wine or whatever. Yeah. I don't want the DCA plastic cup walk around beer. Nope. Tacky. Doesn't nope. belong at Disneyland plastic. or any Disney park in my mind. Yeah. But uh, so this is a big deal for Disneyland. I don't think it's a big deal, but, you know, a lot of people think it's a big deal. So, uh, you know, obviously it's a hot spot for that reason. But we're talking about the Blue Milk. They do have something at Oga's Cantina called Blue Bantha. Ooh. And it's blue milk served chilled with Bantha inspired vanilla butter sugar cookie. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, so if you like the blue milk, I have a feeling, you know, next time Oga's Cantina. Oh, wow. Yeah, the smile on your face is pretty big right now. And it's very big. <laughs> so you got to check that out. They have a pretty extensive menu. Yeah. Tons of non alcoholic uh, options as well if you don't drink alcohol. In fact, I got one of them. I got the Carbon Freeze, which yeah. is Powerade Lemon Lime, Kiwi Cantaloupe, and Blueberry oh. Popping Pearls. And this was so much cooler than I even realized it was going to be. It was like a tall, um, what would it be, like a champagne glass, kind of? Wow. Not, not really. It was a tall, tubular thing that, like, it looked like a trumpet, essentially. Okay. And. It comes out like there's dry ice in the bottom. Nice. And it bubbles and it's just, you know, yeah. activated when it comes to your table, which I, I didn't realize and wasn't expecting. Oh, my God. And it was a pretty cool presentation. Yes. I got to say. So I was all for that. And, you know, it looked like uh, they had a lot of great drink options there. It, that, that is uh, presentation wise for all these drinks, I have to say, for at least the ones For everything. Thought, all the food, all the drinks, the presentation, is I think, top, -notch. top of the line. Yeah. Uh, and because, let's face it, we live in a world where a lot of people, their priority when it comes to food is, is it Instagrammable uh, yes. versus does it taste good? Exactly. So 
the food is Instagrammable. It is beyond Instagram, and it's the colors are a beautiful presentation. You got all the fun steam coming off from it. So none of it felt super overpriced. No, I thought it was very reasonable. And did you eat anywhere else? Um, I didn't. Um, I did go to. <laughs> The Ronto Roosters? Am I saying it? Ronto? Ronto, Ronto Roasters. Roasters. Um, a friend of my, ours uh, got a drink there. I got a Dasani water. So. Ooh. <laughs> Although, it, well, so you got one of the special bottles. I did get one of the special bottles. Okay. So they have special Coke bottles, which is Coke Diet, Coke Sprite, and yes. uh, Dasani water. Correct. Um, we talked about this a little bit uh, on the merchandise episode. I can't believe... No, actually, that's a future episode. But yeah, so they have these collectible bottles. Yeah. And they're pretty cool. I yeah. think they're pretty much the same price as a normal drink in yeah, the park. Yeah, about five dollars. Yeah, something, something like five fifty. I think. Yeah, actually. it was a dollar more. So you know, but they're collectible little plasticware. If they were glass, that'd be really cool. It'd be really cool. But they're yeah. not because that would people would throw those around the park. I'm sure if they were glass. <laughs> but but I'm sorry, you were saying you got he got a special drink. Yes, he got the Tatooine Sunset, and I had very very little, so I um it you know, but it just it. Tasted like a lemonade, which it was because it uh, it's a gold peak unsweetened tea, and it has melon and blueberry in it. But oh. you know, it, it was gorgeous, yeah, just to look at. But you know, plastic cup. It, I think it. No, I think it. What? Yeah, it was a plastic cup. Okay. Yes, and um, but I mean, it's it's a good drink. But yeah, I like lemonade. So like, you think any you version wrong. of lemonade, I've got to try. Yeah, exactly. I'm a big lemonade fan. But Ronto Roasters is super cool. Ronto Roasters, uh, they say, as you wander the market, follow the intoxicating scent of grilled meat wafting through the air. Sink your teeth into a savory grilled sausage and roasted pork wrap at yes. this exotic meat stall. And this very much is in the market, the little shopping market that has yes. a bunch of little stores. And it fits in there very nicely. It does. And this is the cool thing that we kept hearing about. And I got to say, like, Presentation-wise, this is one of my favorite things where yeah. they use a pod race engine. So basically, there's a big display right in front of the stand with a giant pod race engine, and the you know the heat coming off of that, cooking the meat being spun by a droid. Yeah, and it looks super cool. It's amazing. There are two things I wish were included for realism's sake. Yes, I wish there was some scent of cooking meat coming out of there, or at least like. You know, charred wood. Ah, oh, that'd be fun. And or I think a little bit of heat should come out of it. Ah. Uh, I, I know we're in a hot theme park for a lot of the year. Right. And who wants that? But I always felt that way. Even in Tower of Terror, I was like, when we're in the boiler room, I'm like, shouldn't it be a little bit warm warmer, in here? Yeah. I'm enjoying the air conditioning, but come on. Yeah. Give, me, give me a little bit of story here. And I did feel that way. Aside from that, it was super cool. The other thing I thought if we really wanted to go above, above and beyond Imagineering-wise... Yeah. So they're spinning the meat, and obviously it's fake meat because yes. this is not what we're eating. These are like Star Wars animals being, you know, cooked. And I do think it would be super cool if they had figured out a way to like at the beginning of the day it looks like raw meat, and by the end <gasps> of the day it, it looks cooked. Ah, uh, that'd be a fun idea. That'd be awesome, wouldn't yeah. it? I like that. Yeah. I want to see that in the future. Uh, it's one of those things. It's like, is it really worth the money to do that? I kind of say yes. You know there's somebody who would be there and like time lapse the entire oh, of day. Of course. <laughs> yes. In a of second. the meat spinning. So yeah. that would be super cool in my mind. I'd love to see that happen. Maybe in the future. That's something we can hope for. So here you go. Scent, heat, and, you know, levels of cooking. Yeah. And actually going back to the blue milk stand, I don't know if you heard, but you can actually hear the milk being processed by the Banthas. Uh, you know, I heard somebody say that, but yeah. I, I didn't know. So, like, near the milk stand, yeah. I got to be honest, I don't even, I'm sure I walked by it a billion times, but yes. I never went and specifically stood and, like, looked at the milk stand because I, I just kept getting it from other people. Yes. So, yeah. so, so I was stealing it, essentially, from right. friends. But... Yeah, so, like, what what do they sound like? It, it, it sounds exactly like milk being processed, which, you know, I don't... You mean, like, like, like it's from, just, from the udder? Not from the udder. Like, you don't hear, you don't hear the bantha being like, okay. or any kind of that. It's just, it's just like milk being processed through or just a liquid sound. Being like processed. a... Yeah, exactly. It's, it doesn't sound like someone's actually milking him, but okay. I had heard from a friend that uh, got to do a cast member preview that they had that, so I specifically... <laughs> heard that because i'm like mm, what does a bantha sound like but yeah. it doesn't it doesn't sound like that but it, i think it just added to the stand so. nice detail i like yeah it. i like it was, good, it. it was a good detail to have that's cool back to ronto roasters yeah. uh i want to mention this is the place i got my favorite food Ooh. of the the entire i i got it 
twice. Got it twice. I did. Must be and good. it was and like honestly the second time I was like I'm not really hungry, but I'm like <laughs> Guess what? But it was so good. Yeah. And it was the what was it called? The Ronto wrap. Oh, those looked amazing. And it's roasted pork, grilled pork sausage, peppercorn sauce, tangy slaw wrapped in a pita. Yeah. This was delectable. Ooh. This is like this is my butter beer of <laughs> Star Wars Galaxy's Edge because first of all, I, I mean I like sausage, but I yeah. got to be honest, this was more of a they say a grilled pork sausage, but it was to me more of a hot dog yeah. and I don't particularly like hot dogs. Right. But everything else in it was so good that like it didn't even matter. The the pita was super fresh and and you know, uh just super fresh and yeah. delicious and Roasted pork, grilled pork sausage, pepper, the peppercorn sauce, Oof. and the tangy slaw gave it like the, it's a white sauce that was like messy. Yeah. But oh my lord. Yeah. Just pops in your mouth. Yeah. This, the line wasn't long for this. It, the lines weren't long at all for that. Only for lightsabers and canteens. <laughs> but the, yeah, it, uh, I highly suggest if you're going, by the way, they also have breakfast options here, which is really cool. They have like a breakfast wrap as well. Ooh. And I do want to try sometime. Yeah, definitely. But, oh, God, this is, this is one of those things where I'm like, at Galaxy's Edge, there's so many food options. I'm like, I should try something new. I should try something new. Yeah. And then I'm like, nope, I'm nope. going to get a Ronto wrap because it is delicious. Yeah, no, no, I saw you have it and it made me want to go get one. Yeah. But I didn't, unfortunately. Next time. Next time. Get a Ronto wrap. Yeah. That is the highest uh, suggestion I can give as far as food is concerned in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And uh, luckily, not a crazy long line. No. Although I will say one of the things that was shocking to me was... Like, at, at Ronto Roasters, there were two registers? Yes. Like, in Milk Stand, I assume one, right? I saw two. Okay. Yeah. Small amounts of registers at these places. I did yeah. notice in some of, like, the stores, there would be one register, but there'd be cast members with uh, with their data pads, their yes. iPads, swiping cards and stuff. So maybe that's the way they plan to work around it if things get really, really busy. But I was sure. like, wow, I can't believe how little there is as far as, like, processing goes yes it's crazy so not too far from there is cat Saka's kettle which is very much in the little shops as well right it's basically a popcorn stand they have the outpost popcorn mix a colorful blend of sweet and spicy flavors i didn't get this i didn't either not a popcorn guy yeah it did look very pretty though yeah of the colors all of the food looked pretty yeah instagrammable food at star wars galaxy's edge the the milk stand, mm-hmm. docking bay seven, food and cargo, yeah, Ronto roasters, yes, Cat Sack's kettle, and Oga's cantina, yes, and those are the locations to get food in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, yes. So if you when you're to go back, I'm gonna assume number one Oga's cantina yes, for you, yes, of course, okay, yes, and then is there anything you got that you would get again? Blue milk, yes, I would get blue milk again, yes, okay. Is there anything? You wanted to try that you didn't get? Probably the... The wrap. The wrap. Yeah. Okay. That looked amazing. If you're looking for the most options, I'd say Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo is the place to go. Yes. They have a pretty extensive menu. As I yes. said, it changes throughout the day. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's the that's the main cafeteria. Exactly. But not my number one choice. I, yeah, I have to say. They had a lot of different drinks, I noticed, in, in every location. Every location. They... Yeah, just tons of drink options. Uh, honestly, to try everything, which I know a lot of people like to do, they that's, like to try all the food, you probably have to go a good 20 times. I would say, I mean, I that's something I'm looking forward to going to next time, is just all the different drink options and taking Instagram pictures of them. <laughs> you need, you know what they need? They need a, a Star Wars Galaxy's Edge food festival. Oh my God, that would be awesome. They need to do like the Epcot food and wine, where you get the lanyard yes! with the little, uh, yes! you know, the, the little things to break off to taste all the different options. That would be fun. That, I mean, I don't think that they're hurting for crowds at Star no. Wars Galaxy's Edge, so no. I don't think we'll see it for a while. But, I mean, it is an option. Yes. They could do that in the future. But most importantly, I think for the cantina, we have to have a B. Arthur in there. You know, a lot of people have said that. B. Arthur, if, if you don't know the joke behind that, is she plays a bartender in yes. a cantina in the Star Wars holiday special. Yes. The famous, infamous Star Wars holiday special. And, yeah, I mean, hey, if they put... Uh, at least somebody just in like 
costume dressed like her. I think that'd be fun. I'd love it if they did it and didn't announce it. It was just there. Yes. And, you know, amongst the other creatures and such. And I think that would be very cool. I also wish, and there's no space for this in there. Of course, we have DJ spinning records and stuff. But, like, I do feel like it was a little bit of a missed opportunity not to have a a stage for performers. I was going to say. Now, this is not supposed to be that same cantina. So, like, I get it. Like, it's not like, oh, this doesn't make sense storyline-wise. But it would have been cool if we had some aliens playing oh, the famous music. That would be awesome. Or Sny Snoodle, Snoodles. Am I saying her name right? Is uh, that the one from the special edition? Yeah. Well, she's in both versions. Oh, that's right. Yes. But, but she has like her own musical number. Own musical special number edition. and special edition. And yes. people hate that. They do. But I mean, she's in the original and her band is in the original. I yeah. mean, that'd be fun to just turn and see them or, or you know, other characters from the movie. That would be, once again, that. so I feel like with the cantina, there's yeah. so much you could do yes. with it. But I think they're like, we don't want people hanging out here all day. I was going to say, I mean, you, even though it would be so hard to do it, but I would love to just be able to go in there for an hour and relax and get a drink and, yeah. see, and see a little show. But it, it's never going to be that not busy in there. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say Rex is essentially the sunny eclipse of, yeah. of the cantina, yeah. which is cool. I, I'm always for more that's sunny fun. eclipse in my life. So that's good. Uh, before we, we go here, I just wonder overall thoughts on Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It, it, just the food or everything? Just everything. What you, did you think? You were there four hours. I was there four hours, yes. Um, did you feel four hours was enough time? Like, next time you go, how much time... If you're going to Disneyland for a 12-hour day, how much time are you spending in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge? Well, I have to say, you know, I got to do everything I, I could do other than the cantina and building a lightsaber or a droid, and those were the biggest time sucks of the of the uh of the day so i mean i would like to do those next time but all in all you know i was able to do everything within an hour so within an hour how many times did you ride the falcon i did you did it three times three times yeah and i could have done it a fourth but i chose not to so yeah okay yeah i could have done it four times so and then the first time was with a friend and it was a 30 minute wait and then the uh, second time second time were uh single riders yeah so Hey, Chihuahua. Yeah, but, um, and I, I I enjoyed it. I think it's for the Star Wars fan. I can't wait for the second ride to open up. Um, oh, that's an interesting statement. You think it's for the Star Wars fan. So do you, where, okay, where do you put yourself in the Star Wars fandom then? I've always enjoyed Star Wars, but, uh, and I, I, I respect Star Wars. I wouldn't say I'm a diehard Star Wars fan. I'm a Marvel fan. I'd be more okay. excited if this was a Marvel theme park or when the marvel section opens i'm gonna be more excited for that so even though i mean it's pretty i i could be wrong here but i the marvel thing they're doing at dca is nothing compared to star no, wars galaxy's edge of course not but you still are more excited for the marvel thing yes interesting but i'm a marvel boy i've always been a marvel boy my whole life and, yeah and when i see like when, even when i see stark industries yeah I, I get excited about that so yeah well bias for me so I'm excited for the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids land happening. I want that to happen. Is that happening? I would love for that. I mean, yeah. we could, you know. How fun would that be, Ride though? a bee. Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it is. It does sound. I mean, it's, it's, it would essentially be the Millennium Falcon ride. I, I, <laughs> right. Hey, you know. Well, uh, before we wrap this up, I do challenge anybody to go to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, spend the five or six bucks, get the Fatro at get it at Docking Bay Seven, and let get me know challenge. what you think. It's revolting. Yeah. I can't imagine anything at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge tasting worse than that. No. And uh, I, you know what, I didn't get much of is desserts. I gotta get some desserts next time I go. I have to say, if you do go to Docking Bay Seven Food and Cargo, get the desserts there because if anything, they are just so beautiful to look at. <laughs> And they're they're tasty, so <laughs> I'll just look at other people's though. If all I want is the beauty, that is though. true. You could just do that, but very Instagrammable too. So <laughs> excellent. Well, Derek, thanks so much for coming on the show to talk about the food of Star Wars: Galaxy's Edge. Thank you for having me, folks. I want to remind you: head over to DisneyCoastToCoast.com to get your free gift of America's Hidden Mickey's, featuring lesser-known Disney destinations around the USA. It's a really fun way to find these locations around the U.S. that you may not know about that feature Disney stuff and it'll make a different sort of Disney vacation for you. Next time around, just head to DisneyCoastToCoast.com and click on free gift there to get it. Other than that, folks, have a magical day. Bye! Thanks for listening to Disney Coast to Coast. Have a magical day! 
Disney Coast to Coast is produced and hosted by Jeff DePauly. Learn more about the podcast and become a supporter at DisneyCoastToCoast.com.